Hello, this is Naana Cole Kai again with a, another part of the crimes being committed against the Tillery family. If not for the predatory lending crimes that were committed against his parents and which he inherited, which he tried to bring to light to the proper people that you're supposed to notify regarding predatory loans. If not for those crimes being committed against the Tillery family, there will be no criminal charges that now stand against Mr. Tillery. The criminal charges that they have placed on him is criminal threats. Um, the second one is resisting arrest. And then all the other charges stem from him legally and owning his own um, weapons that were in his house. When they came into his house, they um, x-rayed his safe in order to see that he even had guns. But as you can see from the previous video, when they came to his property on November 1st of 2018, that in and of itself was enough for somebody to be frightened for their own safety and then wonder if they're going to be killed. Okay, so they came on the 8th and that's where we left off. So I'm going to start the video again so that you can see. Okay, this is them breaking into his home again. Again, to recap, he is in the squad car behind the bus over here. Now they are illegally and unlawfully entering his home without a warrant. They do not have any warrant. All they had was a restraining order when they came to his property on November 8th. Okay. I will show you a video in one moment where it shows how Mr. Tillery came outside. He came outside with no shoes on, unarmed, and, and, and peaceful. So all of this was unwarranted. I'll move it ahead just a little bit so that you can see what happens. Okay. One, two, three, four five officers officer johnson officer laughlin officer uh, i'm forgetting this this other gentleman's name and then you see there's even more officers you see an officer peeking from behind the bus over here so when he went outside to open the bus to show them the registration as they asked him to do he did it peacefully and without any type of issue and they jumped him from behind the bus he was not aware that there were other officers out there okay so now they're at the front door of his home i'm going to switch it to the other camera so that you can see what is happening okay this is them walking up oh no sorry this is showing you how mr tillery looked when he came back inside the house. He's talking to Officer Laughlin right now. Officer Laughlin is asking him for the registration of the bus. As you can see, he's calm, he's peaceful, he's not, he doesn't have any weapons on him, he doesn't even have shoes on his feet, okay? But he's complying with their requests, thinking that they're here to talk about the bus when in actuality, they had a restraining order that they wanted to issue him. And all they had to do was issue him the restraining order and put it in his hands and give him the constitutional right that he has to turn the guns in within 72 hours or sell the guns or store the guns. Okay. They did not give him that option, that opportunity. I'm going to let this video play out because I want you to see how he looks when he comes back outside again. He has his wallet at this point. The first time they asked him for his ID. Okay. Then when he goes back in the house, he goes back in the house to get the keys. But I'm going to move on. Okay. Now, mark the timestamp. Look at the timestamp. This is an hour after they've had him outside in the car in the heat trying to convince him to give them the right to come in his house unfortunately the video is low but as they're walking into the house they're lying and say they have a warrant 
Mr. Tillery will be able to provide the full video where you can hear the audio. Unfortunately, it's not playing on my computer. But at this particular moment, as they're entering in his house, they're stating that they have a warrant. You can go back and check. On November 8th, 2018, when these officers showed up at his house, was there a warrant issued? You will find out no. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next video. Now, this video is showing the police. They call the PERT team. And if anybody's familiar with the PERT team, the PERT team is the psychiatric emergency team. They call the PERT team because they wanted to create a scenario and, and have Mr. Tillery put on a 72-hour hold. Okay. In doing that, he wouldn't be able to be bailed out. Nobody would be able to talk to him. Anything. You'll see the PERT officer walk up in one moment. I wish the audio was loud enough so that you can hear it. But here's the PERT team. Here's the gentleman. Okay. Then Officer Johnson brings him outside and they talk in front of the in front of the camera, but it's just not loud enough. I have a witness here that that can hear it, but you can't hear it on this. At this particular point, he's trying to convince the PERT officer to put him on a psychiatric hold. He's lying and saying that Mr. Tillery um, is a danger to himself and a danger to others. And so they want to make sure that he doesn't get a chance to get out fast or easily. Okay. The office, this per gentleman is listening to him say this. Then he asked him, well, did he resist arrest? And James Johnson confirms, no, he didn't resist arrest, but we can kind of push the envelope and say that he did. Okay. And so then you'll see him get on his phone and try to talk to somebody to see if that, if it's possible. Okay. So the the claims against him resisting arrest, even James Johnson, the sergeant on on that was in lead of these people, the police being there that day, even confirms that Mr. Tillery did not resist arrest. But they're pushing an envelope just so that they can get their agenda across. Why would they do that? And that is against the law. Okay. I wish we could hear it. It just doesn't play loud enough for you to be able to hear it, unfortunately. Okay. And this is the other video. The perk gentleman comes back up and says, okay, if that's the case, I'm going to need you to say this what he said to you on video or on a recording. And then James Johnson at that point says, never mind, we'll just go ahead and arrest him. We don't need you to, to take him into to, um, psychiatric. Because even he doesn't believe, you can see from his mannerisms, he doesn't believe what he's being told. At no point did this gentleman ever go over and speak to Mr. Tillery and find out his state of mind to see if what the, what the police officer was saying were true. He's asking him to tell him specifically what was said. They're, they're at this point concocting up something to say that he's dangerous and that he wanted to die and all of this other stuff. Okay, I'm going to stop it in reference to the videos in reference to proof that they were there unlawfully and illegally. But what I'm going to go to now is I'm going to show you that prior to November, prior to November 2018, like I said, the sheriff's department was notified about the fraud. The police department was notified about the fraud. The judge himself was notified about the fraud on his property. We went down to the, the Office of Records to verify whether they had changed the deed of his house. Okay. When we went down there and we notified them that the information that they had on it was fraudulent, the clerk said, 
Well, if there's a fraud that takes place, then you need to notify these people. Does it say the district attorney? Yes, it does. Okay. Prior to November 2018, please look at the date. That is May 2018. May 8th, 2018. This is a petition that was drafted up and presented to the district attorney's office by me, okay, with 20 other people who signed it who were concerned about the crimes taking place against the Tillery family. Okay. This is proof that it was received. The person that I gave it to, his name was Bobby Dean at the district attorney's office. Okay. Bobby Dean contacted me back, notified me that Valerie Taney would be the district attorney looking into the case. He also gave me my case number pertaining to it. Okay. And I will read you the case number. Hold on, pardon me, one moment. You, the case number that was assigned to Mr. Tillery's case is 2018RE, R as in Richard, E as in Edward, 0271. Okay, 